Today we're joined by Glenn's Vodka Premiership Management for February once Go again. On. And Posse oh, yeah. Trophy just fell there. there. That's, not a, a bad start. That's not a good start. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've told you, Ange, we had a part in the process of picking you. I put you forward and yeah. you got a Davy Martin deal. <laughs> But, but I changed it last minute for you, you Ange. I really, it. really did. Yeah. But I can't believe you've said that. Completely out of order, mate. No, you, you won it. Clear nah, favourite win it. 13 I'd, points out of 15. Yeah, to be fair, Dave did a good job. They, Brilliant, mate. Them and um, Melky's done a super job at Ross County. Yeah. Like, you look at their form recently, they've uh, they've done a good job. But we're not interested. So thanks for not evading for me, but anyway. No, right. I've eventually doing there, didn't <laughs> I? Eventually <laughs> turned. But see, that on the, since we were last here, unbeaten, Simon? Unbeaten since we last came up. And we spoke to you, and I don't want to really see it on the cameras, but before we went on, we spoke a bit about coaching. So did you take it and feel what we were saying? Yeah, well, I mean, it, you can you can draw a line back to that moment, mate. I mean, everything <laughs> changed <laughs> the moment I spoke to you guys. And <laughs> I walked away shaking my head thinking, what the hell was that? <laughs> Be honest, see, when you won this, did you think, oh, for fuck's sake, I'm going to need to speak to these two clowns again? Be honest. <laughs> Uh, Ian, uh, yeah, <laughs> nah, happy to do it boys, happy to do it. Oh, what a man. Uh, I wanted to ask you something from a selfish point of view, because I've never really heard, heard you speak about training. Mm. Obviously, I want to be a manager, a coach. How important is training to you? So, for instance, somebody plays brilliant on a Saturday, <clears throat> trains rubbish Monday to Friday, do you still play them on the Saturday? Yeah, I, I, you can't look at it like that. I mean, I, 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 I sort of steer myself away from those kind of things. I. I I just expect a certain level of intensity and tempo of training, irrespective, right? So whether you've played well or you haven't played well, that you come to training and that's the opportunity you've got to improve. So I keep reinforcing the guys that every day you've got a chance to be a little bit better than the day before. So there shouldn't be any reason you come in here and not give your utmost. So that doesn't mean you always train well, right? You can have... You told me about the disaster you had at training <laughs> <laughs> when you came down here. So you can have a bad day of training, but it, it shouldn't stop your effort or, or wanting to improve. And sometimes, I, I've said to the boys a few weeks back that our training was, was going okay, but we're actually, it was going too well where we weren't making mistakes. And I said, that, you know, that, that shows me that we're not really pushing ourselves because to improve, you've got to be making mistakes because it means you're trying something new or trying to extend your, yourself, you know, as, a, as an individual, or as a team. So... I'm constantly pushing the guys to, to be the best they can be, but you can't you can't fall into this. It's like when they say, you know, if the team wins, you should never change a winning lineup. And I said, oh, that's a great. And I did that once in the beginning of my career, I remember, and just to make a point, I said, no, oh, I'm not going to change a winning lineup. Next game, we're 2 0 down, and I've got the captain and the best player sitting on the bench next to me. I'm going, what an idiot I was, you know, just to make a point. So, you know, all those kind of things where, you, you know, you, you go into management thinking, oh, cut and dried, it, it's not that simple, you know, you've got to. You've got to constantly stay sort of in that grey area of just assessing things every time you see them, just assessing them on their own merits rather than just having a fixed mindset about it. You know? Wow. If you love players making mistakes, mate, you should sign him again. <laughs> I'm the best at it. <laughs> what would you actually do, Angelo, if somebody in your team couldn't hit a corner into the box? Would you just yeah. get rid of them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Well, you definitely take them off corners to start with. Um, but uh, it is, you know, it, one of the things that inhibits sort of growth and improvement is that is fear because why do you make mistakes like you know you, i'll sometimes see players and we might bring up young ones you probably were a young one or you both and you got brought up and you'll see they can't hit a five yard pass now you know they can hit a five yard mm, pass yeah. why don't it? it's fear right so what you're trying to create is an environment where fear is taken away even with the, the best players right where you when you want to play the football we want to do so you say you want to play out from the back and you've got to play in, in dangerous areas that the first thing you've got to eliminate from the players is fear. You know, to say, well, if you do make a mistake, don't worry about it. There's a solution we'll find. You, there's no repercussions um, too extreme that you're not going to come back from that. So if you can eliminate that, then a lot of those mistakes will sort of disappear as well. But the worst thing you can do is somebody makes some mistakes and you get bang on about it, that not. mistake because it's on the head again. So what does frustrate you then? If mistakes doesn't frustrate you, what is it as a coach that frustrates just, you? Oh, man, I, I'm just not happy if people aren't appreciating the fact that they're doing what they love, you know. They're not coming in here loving yeah. every minute of it. I don't care whether you're playing, you're not playing. I just I just think, I keep telling them, when you're driving in to here, whatever you're feeling, right, if you're not feeling on top of the world, as you're driving, have a look at people who are sitting at a bus stop, probably going to a job that they absolutely hate, but they have to because they've got to put food on the table for their kids or their family, or it's something that they have to do, and they'll give you a better perspective. So if I see anyone coming in here sort of moping about or complaining, I hate, I hate, whinging and complaining mate you know what there's a solution for everything if, and if there isn't a solution 
and we'll just get on with it. So that's that's where I what get frustrated. Mindset. Oh, brilliant, mate. What a mindset. How important is preparation, though? Because if you're going to get an, an interview with the Celtic manager, would you iron your jumper before you've done it? <laughs> Do you know what it was? <laughs> you know what? I did. I once had a player who, who, who we were having the presentation night and he just got a brand new shirt, took it out of the pack. I mean, that's what it was. Yeah, and he ironed it while it was on himself. So he had this iron burn mark <laughs> training the next day. Name, names, who was it? No, no, you don't want to know. James young, Forrest. Young guy in Australia. Don't all right, okay. It's all right. Well, I was thinking, see on the, on the January signings, I always believe that it takes players, certainly when I come from a different country, that will take them time to settle. But the, the, the signings you made, they've hit the ground running right away. Are you surprised at that? Um, no, I, I, look, I, I, I guess I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm happy that they made such an impact. There was obviously some big games, including you know, the Rangers game, where they made an impact. I was always confident that they could come in and, and because again, I'm, I'm, I'm just not picking random players, not random players, but I'm not just picking good players. I'm picking players who are, I'm 90% confident they'll fit into the system. So, which means you eliminate a lot of that, you know, even though they don't totally get the way we play, they have the characteristics, they have the the technical ability and, and that they can adapt pretty quickly. So I was, it was an important period for us. I knew we'd need, for us to sort of be where we are today, we'd need the guys who came in in January to, to come in and play. You know, I, yeah. I didn't think we would have a chance because I knew Kiorga, Dave Turnbull, we had three or four long-term injuries at the time. I'm thinking with the program we've got, these boys are going to come in and play straight away. Um, so. I was confident they would, I, you know, the fact they've done so well has been really pleasing, but not a total surprise now. How tough was that in December? Because the, mm. the squad was thin. I think you played the boy in reception a couple of games, didn't you? I think he came yeah, on for 20 minutes. Yeah, he did minutes. quite well. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. was, it, was it so important just to stay close to Rangers in that December period? Yeah, that was, a, that, was a tough, that was a tough period. Not just stay close in terms of the race, but just to maintain momentum that we built up because it can all fall apart really quickly. Yeah. I mean, you can't understand in football that, as well as things are going, it doesn't take much to, you know, it's like a, a small thread on your jumper, you know, you take it off and it's gone, you know, so. Nice job for And And so I, I just wanted to, but, but it's also a good test of the boys' character. And again, they, they passed it with flying colours. Like we, I never made excuses for them and they never wanted me to, you know. I, I could have come out and said, you know, we've got injuries, we've got people missing and all that. But, you know, they, they really just handle the task really well and, I think that's held us in good stead. See, just sorry, lastly on the January signings, Mida, his work rate off the ball is phenomenal. Yeah, Would you, yeah. What distance does he cover in a game? Because I'm trying to get centre forwards <laughs> to buy into working hard off the ball. The key with Dyson, and, and I mean, it's the beauty of him. I mean, I, he, I know him because I coached him and I knew what he would bring, but it's not even the distance. I'll tell you what the key to him is, is his, his ability to repeat a sprint is just in, is, is elite level. I measured it against, even when I was in Japan, against the very best, his ability to close down, because the hardest thing you guys will know, you do a sprint, you need time to recover to go again, yeah. right? Um, so it's not just about just running, because you could run all day, but him, he, he can sprint, recover super fast and go well, again. Yeah. If you watch the, I think it's uh, the ball he plays through to, to Tommy Rogic against um, Livingston on the weekend, he closes down two players within a millisecond. And I think they were surprised that it was the same person closing yeah. him down. So. That's where he's he's absolutely elite level, and you know we still see the best of him. He's still you know he's still adjusting a little bit, but in terms of his physical capacity, it's 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 elite level. Because right? I love when he presses; he doesn't yeah. stop two yards for people. He actually goes and goes. yeah yeah lets yeah, him yeah. feel on the head. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. great at it, isn't he? Yeah, and it's an important part of the game. You know, yeah. you can't just be floating around up front, mate, and just scoring <laughs> the goals. You know, you got to work for it these days. <laughs> that trade I was on yesterday. Goodness me! But I see what I was going to ask you, and I've always believed, right? I could. You're proving it wrong. I always believed when a manager took a job, I always thought that he had to bring in his, like, his own assistant manager, his own coach, his own physio, whatever it is. But you've, again, proved that wrong. It Why comes, didn't you bring in your own Well, yeah, It just comes down to, I haven't done it my whole career. Like, everywhere yeah. I've gone, I've always worked with different people and, or taken new people, not people I've worked with before. It just depends on your personality. My thing is that I've, I enjoy, I enjoy the, the challenge of, convincing people to to my way of playing the game right so i could take a crew of people around with me and i reckon that would just for my personality like i said that would make me comfortable and probably a little bit lazy in terms of you know what i could just roll up here get them to do the training sessions but 
from the first day I walked in here, you know, there's some really uh, bright guys in the building that I had to say to them, look, we're going to do things this way. And I'll tell you why and I'll explain to you why and I'll get you to believe in it. Um, that keeps me sharp, you know. Yeah. That keeps me constantly always making sure that my message is you know, super, clar you know, super clear. So I love that challenge. I love the fact that I walked in here from the other side of the world, literally just by myself. And before I convinced anyone else, I had to convince the people in that building that I was the right person for the job. See, when you first done that though, did you feel any coaches maybe didn't you like that system or maybe would challenge you on that or? There, there's, look, I, I didn't, but there's always going to be some sort of hesitation because yeah. um, it, it's only natural, but that's that's my challenge, you know? And, and, and in the past, sometimes that hasn't worked out and, you know, pretty soon after I've got the role, I've had to move people on because yeah. There was a resistance there, and I've said the, you know, I say it, you know, as soon as I walk in the door, wherever I've been, is that <clears throat> resistance just doesn't work with me, right? So you either, you, I'm not going to change. There is nothing that's going to happen while I'm here. There's no result. There's no pressure that's going to change me or the way we're going to play our football. So you either jump on board this bus at the first stop, second stop, or third stop, but you're never going to stop this bus. And if you try to, then it probably means you, you're going to you know, get on a different bus, you know? So I'll make that pretty clear at the start, but not in a way where, you know, it's my way or the highway. It's, I really want people to believe in it, you know? And I, I, I can I can usually tell if people are bought into it or not, or they're just doing and behind my back going, this clown doesn't know what he's talking about, mm -hmm. you know? It's 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 pretty easy to see. And, and to be fair to the guys here, they were they were really open, you know? They, they, they embraced it um, on and off the field. And um, I think that's why it's sort of, yeah, turned around as quickly as it has. So, expert opinion, Andrew, if I get a job, should I take on this? You need no, no. You need to convince me. No, that's the first part of management, mate. It's it's whatever I do. Oh, hey, have you went to his side? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Like Please don't fall for that. Uh, <laughs> the first part of your role is to get people to believe in you. I know what I'm doing to her. Not even what you're doing. Not even you're not just you as a person, mate. Yeah. Because how many managers have you played for that have got great knowledge? But you know what? I just don't rate them as a person. There's, that means you'll not, not go to that sort of the level that you need to go to. They need to believe you, in you as a person, you know, and then whatever ideas you have, they'll follow, mate. Oh, I feel inspired, man. Is the hair standing up in the back? I want to get me a suit now, I'm going to manage tomorrow. Are you going to go for a suit? I'm going to go for a suit. Not a jumper. A, a, a black wheelie jumper. <laughs> he went and bought a black wheelie jumper after he gave you a few coaching tips and he shouted to the kids in an Australian accent now, he's embarrassed. Just sometimes, <laughs> my fa I've got five year old kids like at play, but they're all coming in now, inverted fullbacks. Inverted they're fullbacks. They, 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 they can't pass the ball, but they're brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. Love it. Uh, what, did you, what did you think your first experience at uh, Celtic Rangers game, Celtic Park? We were there that night. We actually met you in the hall. Can you remember that? that? I don't think you remember it. No, <laughs> sorry boys. Uh, he came up no. to you though and said, what was it you said? Offered you the Peter. I said, congratulations, I've got you the Peter head job. Do you remember that? No. You were standing speaking. Speaking to somebody in the hall. Okay. No, no, no. That. <laughs> that was a great night. I mean, um, I just, just, uh, I could, you could just sense it even going to the stadium. You know, obviously they don't play those games at night too often, and and the fact that the year before was behind closed doors, it was just the atmosphere, and, and obviously things went well for us, so that, that kind of makes it even more special. But just, I mean, even talking to the guys here who've you know, experienced the games before, they said that night was, was a special ah, The noise in the stadium yeah, was unbelievable, it was wasn't it? Yeah. Do you get nervous before games like that? Inch? No, I don't, I, I've never got nervous um, going into games. I, I kind of, I'm, I'm one of these guys who, I find it hard after games to sort of, irrespective of how they've gone, to, to kind of unwind. Like, I'll, I'll sleep no problem the night before any game, but the night after a game, I'm just hopeless. I just too many things running through through their head. So it's more, me, it's the game, it's the after effects rather than sort of before. Before, it, I'm pretty calm. I'm sort of just waiting. Oh, your work's the done. There's nothing really else you can do. Yeah, well, you, you, you can make some substitutions. You can give some advice. So There's still a bit to do on the day. I'm having a shock in here. I'm actually thinking about going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to be a bus driver. So I, I, think, I don't think this is for me. There's still, there's still stuff you have to do, but it is important. Can I come and live in your office for a week, please, because I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, now. I'm the new manager of the job. <laughs> Uh, yeah, look, I, I've always felt that, that the game day is the players' day. I mean, I, I don't go in the dressing rooms till literally sort of ten minutes before the boys run out. I, I stay out of the dressing room. That's their space. They got. I don't even go out to see the warm up. I leave them to their I own devices. That. Yeah, I leave them to their own devices. I, I again, I, I just go back to my playing career. I hated people in my face in the dressing room before a game. The worst thing I wanted was a coach telling me a million different things. 
Mate, we've got a whole week to work on it yeah. now. You're telling me this priceless <laughs> bit of information, you know. So, so what do you do when the warm ups and just sit in your office? Yeah, I sit in my office and just read or, you know, do watch you a bit of telly. Yeah. What? No, whatever, whatever I'm reading at the time or, you know, I'll just read the program or just pass the time as much as I can. And, uh, and then, like I said, 10 minutes before the game. But, but also, it's my way of kind of just going through the process of what I'm going to do during the game. Because the one thing you, you have to do as a manager is be prepared for every possible scenario, right? So, you know, people say, well, what happens if you, you, a man gets sent off in the first five minutes? Have you thought about it? Because if, you, if you're going to think about it at that moment, mate, you're going to be, yeah, you're going going to be struggling. Yeah? Yeah. You're, you're going to be, so you kind of, I don't know, prepare myself for the worst case scenario. You prepare yourself for injuries, the best case scenario, whatever. And I'm playing all these scenarios in my head before the game. So that's the time I kind of just prepare myself for the game. And I know you've played and you've managed in, in, in massive games before you keep me Celtic, but see on the atmosphere, had you ever experienced anything like that? No, not not because it's unique, mate. Yeah. You know, it's not it's I mean like I've I've, I've managed at a World Cup and it's it's just unbelievable that when yeah, you know, we play Chile and if you hear the Chileans sing their national anthem, mate, it's like it's it's like the scariest and most inspiring thing you'll ever you'll ever hear when they're singing it. It's just incredible. Um but it's just unique, the atmosphere at Celtic Park. It's just the noise and, and, and the songs and, um, yeah, you, you feel the atmosphere um, as much as anything else. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I yeah, you, you try and obviously be focused on the game, but they're just moments you just kind of look around and go, wow. I don't know, yeah. I know you were looking around, I don't know if you've seen, but him and his dad were jumping about with their tops <laughs> off again. What was that? I just do. You always do that in the Celtic Rangers games if you win. <laughs> but see that walk, they walk after it, right? Remember? Oh, uh, uh, you've got to roll with roll it. Roll with Oasis. What, that must have been the yeah. best feeling in the world. Yeah, it was brilliant. I mean, um, like I said, the night went well for us. So you kind of, you, 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 you want to enjoy it and, and you, you kind of understand that, you, you know, it's not always going to be like that. So you don't want to miss those opportunities. So, but the funny thing is the, the boys have done the walk around and I, uh, you milked it a bit, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I lagged behind. And then, you know, I only realised it about 20 metres before the tunnel. I looked around, there's no one around. I'm going, I actually ran off, which was stupid of me as well. But I thought, what the hell am I doing out here, you know? Like, oh, I'm, you've got to me. I'd be the same. I should have got a second lap. And just uh, <laughs> kicked the arse right at it. <laughs> um, also on your first trophy, mate. Yeah, how, was... how important was that to you that you've actually now won a trophy as a Celtic manager? No, I mean, it, again, I don't look at those things. It was just important... I thought it was important for the club and for this group of players, especially after what happened last year, that, you know, you can't, and I, I you know, I think people sometimes take it the wrong way when I say it, but I, I, I couldn't go being manager of this football club for a season without winning something. Um, you know, we had that season last year, you know, that was it for this football club. This football club needs to be winning trophies every year. That's the expectation. And I didn't want to come in and say, well, you know, it's going to take me a little bit of time. So, you know, I, and, and for the players, because we had a, you know, as everyone knows, we had a real tough beginning to the season. And it's just great rewards to see the players who'd been through a hell of a lot in the early part of the year, um, you know, getting the rewards. Um, and, and, and the same for our supporters. So, look, it was it was a great occasion. But I mean, we had a game, I think we had St. Mirren and St. Johnson, like, two days later. Yeah, so right. they kind of move on pretty quickly. So did uh, you not celebrate, Ange, now? Did you not? Well, you look, uh, we, 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 I, I let the boys celebrate that night. I mean, I, I think it's important you do. Um, and, and I did too, but, you know, that meant having a glass of scotch and going to bed at 10.30 instead of 10. So, uh -huh. um, but it is, it's important you, you, you appreciate because you know, you know, that it's not always like that. And, you know, if, you know a guy like Callum will tell you last year wasn't like that. You kind of know what it's like when you don't win something. So when you do, it's important you, you enjoy it. Do you to be scotch, eh? Yeah, I do. What, yeah. just with ice or a wee bit of water? Just what? ice, yeah. yeah. You like that as well, nice, don't you? Yeah. Uh -huh. I think we're basically the same guy, innit? No, after that comment, no, you don't want to get in the match day. <laughs> Goodness me. Imagine that, your players turn up for match day and you don't want to get with them. My lord. <laughs> <laughs> but that, and you know what, Simon, so, mean, winning that trophy, you said it puts some in the, no, the, but the managers of Jock Steen, Mark Neil. Do you, do you look at that, the history of the, of the club with the top managers? Do you take passion for that? Oh, absolutely. Um, but. Never ever will I be that yeah. at that level. I mean, How those guys. Why no, not? look, because I knew you guys said that. Um, because I just think, a the world's a bit different now. I think you know, the managers staying around at one place for too long is just doesn't happen anymore. There's just people are just don't have the patience anymore to 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 ride it out. You know, even if you're winning things, they get, you know, That's you live like in a society they get bored and they want something different. So, yeah. but those two guys in particular, I mean, Jock Steen's 
just ridiculous that you know, um, you know the, the impact he had on this football club and and same with Martin. Um, but there's there's a notch on their belt there that you know they had an impact in Europe, which is a driver for me. Um, I'd, I'd love to have an impact in Europe with this football club, not dismissing the fact that you've got to win you know, everything domestically first. You know yeah. you can't do that, but um, that is that's a driver for me. I think that's something that you know I can. If I can leave a legacy at this football club, maybe that could be it, that we make an impact. What that looks like, who knows? I mean, we didn't make the impact I wanted this year, but, um, you know, that's that's something that, that's definitely a motivation for me. I watched the clip of you looking at Alan Brazil. Was that the first time you'd seen that? Yeah, yeah, the, the recent one, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember Alan Brazil as a player, you know, and... and, and he was a good player, wasn't he? He was, uh -huh, was a good you player. Know? So it's one of those, so you kind of, and I just leave it at that level, and I just, you know, he's obviously doing a different role now and he's got an opinion of that's, that's fine mate I don't, it doesn't bother me it's you know it's it's he's, he's he's obviously trying to make a bit of a statement he made a statement and he's got to live with it now yeah you're good you're good on the Australian did you do a lot of media in Australia not a lot mate I mean I you know no more than I do here so um it, it just it just depended and it, you know, I'm not always cheerful you know there's yeah, yeah. I have my moments so uh depending on uh, the questions I get asked but um yeah, they all love me in Australia now. They, to be fair, they didn't always love me when I was the national team boss. <laughs> so, you know, it's changed a bit. Did you have a few run-ins with the media over when you were the national oh, yeah, team always, boss? Right? Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but that's that's part of the role, you know. You, when things uh, don't go well, or like I said, you've been in a place for too long, sometimes, um, you know, people like to provoke, so. Do you plan your, see before you go after a game, but you're going yeah. to speak to me, do you plan answers before you go and speak? I don't plan answers, but you, you have to plan a, a message. Um, you know, I'm not going to sort of, if, if I think there's something important to say, I'll make sure I, it, it gets said, you know, whether that's, you know, about something about the team or, or, or our performance, if, you know, positive or, or otherwise, irrespective of the questions I get asked, I'll, I'll make sure that the message I want to be sent, because you're not just talking to, you're talking to your supporters, supporters. you're talking... Yeah, you know, to your players, um, your staff, everybody involved with the football club. You're talking to the outside world, and and you know what I say every time I, I speak is I'm I'm not representing myself. I'm representing the football club. So, you know, if there's a message I want to get out there, but aside from that, you know, I, I take questions as they come. If, if I don't like one, I'll tell people. And if I, if I do, I, I'll answer it. You know. I'm surprised we've never been taught that. It's Some of your comebacks are legendary, aren't they? Yeah. They're absolutely brilliant, but we, we're petrified to say the rank hang, aren't we? Sometimes we're like, oh, we don't say the rank Be honest, how many of these have you thought have been stupid questions? Quite a lot. <laughs> no, but, but you'll see that I've probably ignored a couple and just <laughs> given a different answer, <laughs> taking it to my own sort of message. The big man's going back to Australia, the, the homecoming. homecoming. You've, got, you've got flights booked, you've gone over, haven't you? I'll be going over to the Australia. Right, it'll be a great trip. How excited are you to go back home? Yeah, look, again, I've got a sort of you know vested interest in it because it's it's going to be weird not weird it, weird's not the right word but like this is a massive football club and you know I'm the manager of it so if I wasn't I'd be buying tickets to the game you know to watch the team play that's so, so it's going to be crazy for me to be there as the manager of the football club and um, you know I, they love their sport in Australia I know they love um, you know they love this football club so um yeah, it's a great time of the year, November, to be going down there. Um, it's a great city, so it'll be great. I was I played in the last Celtic team to play in Australia, big man. Did you? Played Melbourne. Played okay, Melbourne friendly. victory, yeah, I was yeah, absolutely yeah. hopeless. <laughs> Stunk <laughs> the gaff it, wasn't it? Absolutely. But what a city, I loved it. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, so they've been down under a couple of times. So I went to Brisbane, I think Perth. Um, always get well received and um, yeah, it'll, it'll be massive. It's a good time, like I said, it's a good time of the year because it's kind of um, just before the World Cup, so everyone will be football mad at the time so it'll be a sellout for sure and um yeah looking forward favorite to it. Aussie to play for Celtic Scott McDonald or Mark Viduka oh no I love Dukes mate Viduka was brilliant I mate, love Dukes I mean he's what? he's he's an all-time great of Australian football but what a guy mate is he oh what Can a you guy he's an example why? what a man he's just he's just um he was probably the most laid-back uh individual but um super funny um you know, if you if you ever come across him now, you he, you'll be sitting at his coffee shop making coffees, and and nice. you'll sit there all day, and you can talk to him about anything, and you'll you'll have the best time, mate. He's a super guy. I love the Dukes, mate. The Dukes. He is, was he was top level for Duke, wasn't he? he? He was top shelf, mate. I I so when he was in Australia, he was a sorry, just sorry, top shelf. He might get a bit excited. It's not the top shelf. <laughs> <you're thinking. laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, sorry, just apologies. Case. That's an Australian term. Anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, so Big Dukes when he first broke in, he was 17 years old in Australia, right? And he was, and I was an assistant coach. It was my first coaching gig, assistant coach um, at the club I played for just before I got the the senior gig, and we were playing against his his team in the semi final of, of of a cup, and he was 17 years old, absolute beast at the time. He just he was a man mountain even at 17 scoring goals and the manager i had at the time was um who was i was working for was a guy called frank arrock who's recently passed away but he managed australia national team you know really famous coach in australia but he was really outspoken and the week leading up he's he's going i'm gonna have a go at this young kid he goes i'm gonna tell him he's overrated and he went in the press and said this kid's overrated you know they're making a big deal out of him now man i'm going oh, i don't think this is a good move right Anyway, Dukes ended up scoring a hat-trick and every time he scored, he'd do a slide right to the bench, <laughs> right in front of me and I'm just going, oh, no, no. He was an um, unbelievable player and uh, even better person, mate. Did you coach him? No, I didn't. No. He, he retired by the time so I got to the national team. You wouldn't have been pressing, um, would you? No, he's no pressing for you. The big <laughs> no, no, he wouldn't. No, no, he's no. No pressing. And he would have told me too before, you know. He would have said, look, don't bother me. I said, look, put the ball back in the net. That'll do me. Yeah. That's fine, no. But the reaction for Celtic fans over in Australia must be massive to you just now because there's a lot over there, isn't there? Is there right? Mate, I, it, it is. And, um, like, I, I, so when I, when I was playing, right, even though the club I played for was sort of Greek backed, as I've said, I, I literally was in a room full of guys like you, right? Ideas. No, well, <laughs> Scotsmen who just didn't stop talking. And for, 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 for all intents and purposes, most of them were Celtic supporters. And they would just bang on endlessly about Celtic to me, right? And it was all wee man, big man. And I'm just going, what the hell have I got myself into, right? So, they kind of indoctrinated me into how big the club was. And I, you just naturally, you know, you, you, you follow it. And then, you know, I'd then realise that every Saturday night they'd be going out to a pub at 2am to watch the team play, you know, because that's, that's when it was on. And you fit, find out they've got supporters clubs down there and they're just, they're mad, mate. So that's why the whole thing will be a little bit just surreal for me. It'll just um, just blow my mind to be back there as the Can manager. you remember where you were when you first heard the Celtics' interest? Have you asked this before? I don't want to be a broken record. What, for the job? Yeah. I was in Japan and it was... Um, Did you sit in your house? I was actually. It was, it was, it was, a, it was a weird one because I kind of, you know, I'd, I'd been thinking about sort of moving over to Europe. I'd had four years in Japan. I thought that was going to probably be my last year in Japan. And I'd spoken to clubs over this side of the world and they always ended up, you know, I don't know who the hell I am. And I could tell by the end of the phone call that... This isn't happening, you know. Yeah. They just, it's just a courtesy call to, to say they spoke to me. Um, but when I spoke with the club, and I remember I, I said to my wife, because we've got two young ones, I said, get them out because I'm doing a Zoom call. I don't want them <laughs> running around throwing <laughs> things at me or me trying to, you know, Bart Simpson style strangle one of them. Um, and she would, took them out and she literally came back an hour later and she goes, how'd it go? And I said to her, I, I think I've got the job. I said, it's just bizarre, but if it went well as I think I did um, and it kind of just rolled on from there it was just crazy and is she in the hesitations of just going right come on let's go to Glasgow no no she was she was she was all in no she 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 I mean we, we made a decision that um, you know that we'd um, sort of make the next move across here whatever wherever that may be whatever the destination was but she was yeah no she's she was super excited about it. She, um, yeah, she, she said, let's, uh, let's pack the bags. Oh, what a woman. I get, I, I'm a proper jealous type of guy and I heard Craig Bellamy coming out. Did you hear him saying that Anderlet were we'll looking at you? Yeah. yeah, there was a few clubs. Like it was, but like I always got the sense that most of them were, it was, you know, we, which is not, you know, as, as you found out when I got appointed, you know, I wasn't a well-known name on this side of the world, irrespective of sort of what, I, what I'd done in my career. And um, so yeah, yeah, I always sort of thought to myself, It'll happen. I knew, I knew I'd get an opportunity over here, and I knew that if I got an opportunity over here, I'd be successful. I, I, I kind of—I've never worried about that. It was just where it was going to be. But yeah, the fact that it was here was just um, yeah, it was, it was a pleasant surprise. So at start of the scene, did you expect it to be going as well as it has? I always expect it to go well. Yeah, I mean, I—I I haven't. And again, I, I, I don't want to be arrogant or anything, but my whole career, I've had success wherever I've been. And that gives me the confidence that wherever I go, I'll have success again, you know, that it, it, it's, it's what I expect because otherwise I wouldn't even sort of 
knowing the consequences of not being successful, being manager of this football club, you're going, I'm not going anywhere near it unless I think I can do it. Um, yeah. So, so no, it hasn't surprised me. It's what I expect and, and hopefully more to come. I just worry about with, with, the, with the running and it gets so much pressure. Me as a person, I would just say, kick it, get it away. <laughs> You'll never, never say that. But you? at this stage of the season, is it all about results, Andrew? Are you still looking for performance? It's always about results. See, that's wow. the bit that, that so people don't it. understand is that I play this way because it brings me results. results uh -huh. You know, and, and that's, I, I, I think I've said it to you before, I, I, I don't get it when people say, well, you know, we need a result this weekend, so we're going to, you know, play safe or you know, go long or whatever. Yeah, well, if you think that's going to get your result, do it every bloody week. No, but I'm more saying, but, like, would you take getting wins now and no playing as maybe, maybe as well? No, because that's, what's that, how long is that going to last? Last, that's you know? true. You know, it's... it's I've it's, an absolute shock from, you know? <laughs> Dearing me. That's the worst, isn't it? But, but it is, it's a, it's a trap people fall into and I yeah. keep saying to them, because people, people keep thinking that I, I want to play this kind of football because I want to prove a point. No, it's because it's been hugely successful for me. It's the only way I know how to do it and, and, and to be successful. So if we're getting to this point now where you know, everything gets decided and we're doubling down on our football, mate. This is who we're going to be. This is how we're going to go for it. We're not going to change. I totally agree with us, by the way. I'm just putting a counter-argument together. No, he's not. He's no, it's not. That's his big thing, by the way. He, shouldn't he see the pressure? No, 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 that's his big thing. Do not lie. That's his big thing. No, he's not. He's not. James McPake, who's our pal, came out and says that you gave him a bit of advice. Is that something that you look for in younger managers to maybe give him a wee hand here and there when you can see that maybe they're struggling? Yeah, look, I don't think James is struggling. I understand the space he's in. But, yeah, look, if I can... I know when I was a young manager, if, if somebody that was more experienced or I respected, um, you know, came along and even said hello to me, that would give me a bit of a lift. Yeah. Um, so, and, you know, some some managers won't, won't want to have a chat to me. That's fine as well. I mean, I don't... But, you know, I always find, especially with... with, with I really respect everyone, every manager who's in a role. It's, the, it's such a tough gig. doesn't matter what level you're you're doing it at it is such a tough gig and i have great respect for people who put themselves out there you know, i i have much more so people put, uh, put themselves out there the ones who just sort of sit on the sidelines and never get involved you know so I mean, irrespective of the manager that was a, that was a dig at him there, wasn't it? <laughs> no, <laughs> irrespective of the manager I, you know sometimes i you know I, I don't even like the way they carry on but i'll always speak to them um because i respect the fact that they're doing the role um and if i can offer advice and and like i said i've had 25 years in the gig mate i've experienced it just about all um and if i can offer advice or and look james is a great example because right? he's already achieved a hell of a lot in his career but he'll be thinking about the end of it yeah you, you gotta you know that's you wear that as a badge of honor you know how many times has jose Mourinho been sacked or yeah. you know everyone goes through that you know it's yeah you hang your hat on the stuff you achieved and you you, you learn from the stuff that you it didn't work out and then you go on to the next one you know last few bit just to running ah, i'm just how excited yeah. i'm just a bit emotional well yeah just, no, just when you, from for last year the way the world was, when you've came to set, you've brought an unbelievable feeling back to every supporter. Now look, I, and I, I understood that. I, I, it was funny because I, I felt that even here, you know, like there's a lot of people who, you know, just really down, you know, and I, and I, I got it because the whole world was such in a weird place and then everything that happened. So the one thing I had, I, I, I wasn't affected by that. I had energy and I thought, well, you know what, I can, I can sort of, just keep people up. And, and the number one thing I wanted to do was give people hope. I couldn't guarantee success, right? Even though I believe that I can deliver it. But I think if you can give people hope, whether that's supporters, players, people you work with, that's so massive because then they buy into it. And I sense that with our supporters, even at the start of the year when things weren't going well, and uh, because they saw something there that gave them hope, they backed it, you know, they got behind it. And the players sort of felt that and fed off that. So... It was a big part of sort of when I, you know, even when I st first started speaking is that if I can sell a bit of hope to people at the beginning, I think they'll, they'll take me along for the ride for the rest of it, you know. And eight games to go, as I was just said to you, how excited are you for the run? Yeah, massively so, mate. A few cup games too, hopefully. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, so it's, um, it's, it's an exciting part of the year, mate. I love this part of the year, you know, and um, the fact that we're in the spot we're in where we're in contention, um, Super calm. Right? And then us three have got a holiday booked up. Magaluf for going on it. Magaluf, three. aye. What? Us three have got a holiday booked for the summer. Magaluf. Us three. Coaching holiday. Coaching holiday. Is that right? Okay. I'll just tell my wife. She's making different points. <laughs> and. Right. Oh, what oh, a guys. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thanks, Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Thank you.